and as I said before, these these little things can make a lot of difference. You can always squiggle to get a different kind of texture. Now you would not get the really strong coverage, for that you would need some gouache, which I can show you next as well. It's a little moment of nature that's sort of a stuck on that little white piece of paper and it's just the air. Hey guys, I hope you're all having a lovely time. I sure am. I'm in the forest and forest is one of my favorite places to be. I don't know why. I mean, being at the seaside is great, but forest is just something so extra relaxing about it. I just, I can't explain. I'll go around, maybe try and look for some mushrooms to make a yummy soup or a no stir fry or, and maybe I'll find something really interesting to you know collect and pick for some more sketches just so I can use it as um, you know some references okay so here they are now I'd need to choose maybe one for the actual artwork I really like this one though I like this one too yep okay I think I've got my composition and of course, you know, when, when you are painting something or drawing something, you also have the creative license to add things, get rid of things and so on. Start sketching. So the first thing we need to sketch is to mark very quickly the overall shape. You could always go with the oval and then get the corners a little bit more um, corrected and then of course this leg of the mushroom, I don't know, stem, whatever it's called in English, in Russian it's just called leg, if I sort of word to word translate it. And then there'll be all these other things. And see now I'm correcting the shape already, getting it to look more like what it actually does a little bit wider on the top and this head as well I need to do a little bit of correction so this bit there kind of like almost a little bit bumpy but goes up bump bump and then flat there is also a little bit of that clover showing through and a couple of sticks that are stuck onto the roof of the mushroom. Some more here and some more there. And a couple of these ones. So there, because this is probably quite hard to see through the camera, I will also take a photo of it and I will put it on uh, Patreon so that you guys can see it a little bit better there. Next step is to start painting. I'm not going to bother with the background. I'm just going to leave this white. What I do want to start with is the undertone for the mushroom. I'm going to use this medium Escoda Reserva Kalinsky number eight brush round brush. Any round brush should work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of try and find these medium colors. This is a mixture of um, yellow ochre, a little bit of uh, conocridone gold together. And I'm just going to do a reasonably light wash. I'm not going to add too much water to this paper. By the way, this is a 300 grams um, watercolor hot pressed paper. And I'm just going to go over and just leave these little bits. Now my next thing is to get a little bit of green gold and mix it with the same color because you can see how there's quite a bit of really strong sort of a yellow shade that's coming through and I'm going to do a very very soft quick wash like that is an under painting and just let that dry. Next I'm going to create a little bit of that sort of a yellowy but also just tiny bit of um, grayish kind of a shade like that. That same mix with Van Dyke brown and just a bit of black but just tiny bit you see just to tint it a little bit and now I'm going to go in and just create that really quick wash 
So the, this mushroom's got a spongy bottom. And just add a little bit of the shadow as it sort of goes down. There'll be more colors, of course, added up later on in terms of browns and so on. But this is just to just to start off with our nose shadows. Okay, so now I'm going to mix a little bit of more browns. So I'm just adding more colors into this now. I'm not, you know, doing anything new. And just adding a little bit of the, you know, some darker color expressions. And mushroom is, is kind of like, they have a very leathery sort of a feel to them. So they're not soft, but they're not hard. They have that sort of really strange texture to them. That's what makes them so cool as well. And a little bit darker around the edges. And since the texture is not very even, you can add the colors in a somewhat patchy sort of a manner like that to actually resemble the real thing. A little bit more of the shadows here and there. And almost dry brushing this color. The reason why I want to dry brush is because you see there's lots of little specks. So that sort of gives that that look. Next, I'm gonna go for even a darker color. This is pretty much just burnt umber here. And add some more, just in some areas, you know, a little bit more of those darker little spots here, then here, and here. And again, going over. So what, what I'm doing here is I'm doing some layering. So this is a layering technique. And now I'm just going to go really lightly over some of these little bits, you know, that I've placed over here to create my natural but staged composition. <laughs> and I can mark some of these down as well. I would need to work over them more. But this is just for now. Just for a little bit. So next, I'm going to start adding other colors. So at the moment I've been working with browns and yellows mainly. Now I'm going to start adding some um, dark rich reds. Uh, and the reason for that is that you can actually, if you look closer, you can see that there's quite a bit of red going through the mushroom. It's not the main color. The main overall color, you'd say it's sort of like a yellowy brown. But if you do look in some areas, you do see some of that interesting variation, you know, happening where you've got just tiny little bit more red, just tiny little bit more yellow and so on. And these are always very, very important, especially when you work with watercolor or you know, any color really, even if it's an oil painting, still. You always need to look at some some less um, visible, more colors that are hidden. And normally when people look at those things, their eye would not pick up those colors. But when you're trying to paint something, it's very, very important, it's crucial to pay attention to those things, you know, because that's what makes things what they are. And that's exactly why I always say don't paint from your imagination because if you're painting from your imagination, even if I just went picking mushrooms and I've picked them, I would remember them in browns. I wouldn't remember that there's so much red going through. That's why it's important to have the real thing or your next best thing is a very good photograph with a lot of information. Not photoshopped, no filters on it, nothing. You need the real thing. That is, of course, taking into consideration you want to create a realistic looking artwork. Okay, so next I'm going to go for more browns, just this dark brown color, and I'm going to go over this again. Just add some of that red through. And I'm just going to mark, just very quickly, very lightly, a, you know, this little leaf here. Just going to pop a little bit of green, and I'm going to use a little bit of this green that's on the brush, just like that. More green, and this time it's going to go through here, and just a little bit through there. 
I'll lay it out a little more. This is just a very like just a just a tint kind of. And so this is like the homemade black. Uh, and just in some spots. I'm just adding it there. Adding it there. And in a very, very soft way. So just tiny a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of most of the paint now from the brush and I'm just gonna go over it like that. So so softly and merge it in. And then we've got a little shadow there and do a very similar thing on this side too. And this side too. Now I'm gonna go for a much richer, darker brown. It's almost like an outline on the edge there. It's not a straight line, but definitely darker in some areas. And now I'm going to use a smaller brush. This is a liner brush. It's very good for doing natural patterns and things like that. And now sort of getting into more of the more intense colors and smaller details. So any tiny little shadows that are very pronounced. Any textures that are on the head of the mushroom. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to go over and um, check out my Patreon page where for just $2 a month, you can support this channel to make more videos for you. And for just $8 a month, you get to see all the extra videos. And there are also things like you can go in a drawer, you can have one-on-one -on -one sessions and so on. Lots of very interesting things that I think you will enjoy. So here and there, then a little bit of a shadow from the little leaves as well and getting into the texture here now this part is very very textured just really softly adding a little bit more texture some textures here Okay, so here I'm mixing quinacridone gold with some burnt amber. For those of you who are painting alone or interested to find out which colors I'm using. And I'm just adding some more of these little spots over the top. And this is where you don't really want to have things uniform, you want them to be kind of rough because that's the texture of the of the leg of the mushroom. I'm also going to use some of this color to just add a little bit more of that. Sort of a browny tone in some areas. And remember watercolor always it tries a little bit lighter than it looks when it's quite damp. Just like that. Now um, I'm going to work on the darker spots, you know, those little branches and little twigs and things. And add some more color there. Very easy to do with this liner brush. Sort of does it for you, kind of. Because the line becomes so natural. Very straight, but very, very natural. Not stuff or anything. So I will add all the materials in the description under the video. You guys have a look if you're interested. That is, of course, if I can find them. Some of the materials are quite hard to find on one, especially if I got them in the art shop. A little bit here and there. As well, we'll add some green. Because some of these little things are still a bit green. And some greenery here as well. And 
and just black and Van Dyke brown around these areas to see with each next layer I'm just getting darker and darker just needs a bit more shadow here so I'm just gonna create shade on there and then softer same on the other side sort of a more yellowy green so I'm just mixing some of this hookers green in with that yellow mix that I've had before so it's very grassy sort of a warmer grassy kind of a color and just add some over the darker shades that I've just painted just like that and maybe add a little bit of that green through here it's not really on there but I just I just like you know a little bit of the accent of the other colors so that when you look at the finished work you get that carry through happening always makes the work more interesting you know always gives it that little something extra going for the darker color again and again adding more shadow that's remember how I always say like watercolor goes lighter when it dries so that means that you might need to do a few layers until you achieve the color that you want again not many people think of layers when they think of watercolor but it's one of those things and softening some of this sort of darkness so that it doesn't look all so separate just getting this overall darker burnt umber and some black and neutral tint together and adding even more details again some more shadows under that hat like this just a little bit more so you're just constantly constantly building it up and you can also do a little bit of that sort of a texture because you see it's really spongy so this time I'm going to use some of the metal like red and also I'm going to use some of the English red it's almost like a brick red an English red you know it's very soft and very brick like so these two colors and in some areas just a little bit of that redness within that brown you know almost like that red wood kind of a shade and as I said before these these little things can make a lot of difference to your overall finished look okay so now I'm just going to refine some of these um, little leaves and just add a bit more shadow let's have a look we've got some shadow on this side and and again going over and darkening the previous shadows now going back to work on all of these little twigs and things and it's pretty much just going over a bit stronger and stronger and here with they there's quite a bit of them crossing you can just really pile it up like that and then there's one twig here and it's got quite a bit of sort of interesting texture it's wider and it sort of has little, little bumps on it then there's like a little pod kind of a thing there and then of course we've got this twig in here make it more pronounced now that everything else is so much darker you really can see that okay now we can really make some of these things stand out and I'm actually going to use my artistic license and I'm actually going to add more of these things just to suit the composition things like that 
See, look, I've got a little smudge there. I can turn it into a couple of little things. Maybe little flies or... You know, to just add a little bit more sort of ambience to this thing. At this stage, if you're happy with it, you can say that the work is finished. But for those of you who struggle with creating thin little lines, I've got a little tip. And if you have seen my some of my mixed media tutorials, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. The tip is getting some water mixable pencils. First of all, it can offer you more colors because you might have a different color scale to what you've got on your watercolor. So see here, a lot of some of these colors do cross, but some of these colors are very different. Um, so you can use that. And you can also use, I'll just show you just as an example, like for example, with black and things like that, you can actually just do the lines and things. Again, it's fine to do it with watercolor brush. And that's sort of my preferred probably choice to do it, but you can always add these things with the pencil, same with the shadows. So if you need to darken something or if it's you think it's taking too long to layer the the watercolor on, you can always do this. And to create that sort of a drawing painting situation, you can always squiggle to get a different kind of texture. Now I have created most of it with the uh, paint, but you can start a bit earlier on. Again, if you're not a big fan of just using watercolor on its own, you can resort to things like this. I'm also going to get a little bit of the screen and just make some areas a little bit brighter. Another cool thing about perhaps wanting to use watercolor pencils is that you can use the white pencil as well and if you want something a bit brighter if you want it a little bit merged and so on and so on you can always add a little bit of this now you would not get the really strong coverage for that you would need some um, gouache which i can show you next as well but you can always you know just go over and lighten some of these areas up or make them a little bit more uh, merged if that's the look that you're going for can be quite interesting and never really feel extremely precious about things always experiment because it's just through experimentation that you would find the most suitable ways of drawing and painting for yourself you know so that's always it's always a good idea to just you know do a bit of that okay so as I said I will show you how you can add a bit of gouache in. So here is my gouache. Oh, here is my gouache, and then it goes off. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to go very carefully with my brush. And like for example, if you, I don't even know what I would want to do here with a white, but maybe some spots. You know, maybe a little bit for the texture or something like that you could always, you know, you could really vamp up the detail level and things like that with the white. Again, it's not necessary. What I'm doing now is not necessary, but it could make things look very interesting if you wanted to, if that's what you want to go for. And so on. something like that okay so now that I've showed you these other styles and tricks I am going to just add a bit more green but just with a brush this time and you know some of these little bits and pieces a bit of moss and so on put a little fly 
and just on top of it. And there we have it, there's a little sort of a moment of nature that's sort of a stuck on that little white piece of paper and it's just there you know for you to look at for you to maybe remember maybe for me you know to look at it and remember that day in the forest so now every time i look at it that's what i'm going to think about so it can always be fun you know to experiment please don't be too how should i say it too scared to move away from some of the things that i'm showing you here like if you already have experience to try things and you think i really like this but i also like this other technique i want to add please feel free to do that you know there's no sort of a this is how you should do it and there's no other way about it you know if you like to bring in more gouache for example then you can use other colors in there as well some of these are just I think a little bit darker in some areas, so I'm just gonna bring a bit more contrast to them and these little lines too. Little twigs here and there. What other little things I forgot to add? Just some little dots, like maybe sand, little sand bits stuck on, maybe. something like that okay I think that's I'll make this one a bit longer just for the sake of the balance of the composition um, yeah so I think this is it and I think this is done So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so, so far. And um, remember, there'll be more videos coming up that you might really enjoy. Also, I would like to take this chance to say a big, big, huge thank you to all of my patrons who are already supporting this channel. Um, and you guys, don't forget to go over there and check it out. I've got so many different things over there that you might enjoy. So, till next time.